Okay, it's time for our opening address, and for this I'd like to invite Professor Graeme Virgo QC, the Senior Pro Vice Chancellor for Education here at the University of Cambridge. Let's give him a really, really warm welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished guests and friends, I am honoured uh, to have been asked to give the opening address at the 8th Africa Together Conference. Uh, welcome to the conference, welcome to Cambridge, a really special conference organised by students and aimed at all who are interested in the great and beautiful continent of Africa. I am deputising for the Vice-Chancellor, who is abroad at the moment, but he did want me to say how disappointed he is that he cannot be with you today, and he sends you all his very best wishes for a successful conference. And I will just say as well, you saw that photograph being handed over to the Vice-Chancellor. That has been put on the wall in the Vice-Chancellor's office. And I walk past it almost every day, uh, reminding us of what the, the Cambridge Africa Society is doing, uh, has done. You mentioned the blueprint, uh, and it's already having an impact. Cambridge works very slowly but it's having an impact already, and I'm delighted about that. Being together, and some of us being together in person at long last, working together, Africa together, are of course what we celebrate today. And how wonderful it is that we have representatives of an entire continent, home to 54 nations and more than 1.2 billion people coming together to work towards a common goal, to exchange ideas and carve out pathways to a new Africa. The late great South African, the great African, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, often talked of the concept of, and I, I apologise for my pronunciation, you can correct me later if I get this wrong, but the concept of Ubuntu, a term that means humanity. And sometimes Ubuntu is translated as, as I am because we are. And it's true, we are nothing without each other. The University of Cambridge is nothing without its people, its students, its staff, its academics from all over the world and with the most diverse talents and expertise. We all learn from each other and develop through listening and exchanging ideas. Archbishop Tutu said, Ubuntu speaks of the very essence of being human. It is to say, my humanity is caught up, is inextricably bound up in yours. We belong in a bundle of life. A person is a person through other persons. Sadly, African history is scarred by the actions of those who have failed to recognise each other's humanity. And of course, there are versions of the same scars that crisscross the world. There are many challenges facing Africa today, though they are far from exclusive to Africa. Winning the fight against poverty, Achieving food security, equality and inclusion, energy solutions and managing the future of technology are incredibly difficult issues. Issues that researchers from this university are working hard for too. And working closely with African governments, universities, businesses and NGOs because it is by working together that we will achieve a new and better future, by working in partnership. 
Cambridge has research partnerships with 50 institutions across 18 countries in Africa, and we are looking to expand this significantly. Our Cambridge Africa programme is designed to develop mutually beneficial engagement between researchers in Africa and Cambridge to assist African universities to become world-leading research institutions and for us to learn from their expertise. It is a programme that has thrived for nearly 15 years because it relies on real partnership, because it addresses and helps to reverse the continent's brain drain, encouraging graduates to return to Africa and contribute to its growth, and because it aims to address African priorities in Africa and to take a lead from African researchers. Today's conference gives me great hope for the future. It is a unique opportunity to showcase the many ways in which African policymakers, business leaders, innovators and young people have responded to calls for action. For Africa to re-merge and take back control. With education and support, and a spirit of togetherness, the opportunities are endless. And I know that young people in Africa are seizing those opportunities. I want to give you just one example that you may already be aware of, but I love this story, uh, about some students at Makerere University in Kampala who are working with the government on a joint program that has established Kira Motors, a company that has built and will manufacture solar-powered buses. A perfect example of an initiative powered by the sun that's created local employment, local manufacturing, and a long-term vision across Africa. That is a perfect example of sustainability in action. Africa can and Africa will become a leader in sustainability. I have no doubt about that. With the threat of climate change and the need for power in order to develop, the use of renewable energy is an imperative. And it's wonderful to see young people, students, creating something that will be of real and lasting benefit to Uganda and to Africa and beyond. There are many obstacles in the pathway to a new Africa, but the creativity and determination of her young people, young people like those in this room today, give me great hope. Through them, through you, through your aspirations and ideas, edu education, dedication and hard work, African nations will take back control of their own destiny. Through them, peace, prosperity and a sustainable future will be achieved. And finally, in closing, I want to congratulate the member of the African Society of Cambridge University, for your work in organising this conference, but your work in Cambridge. It has been a real pleasure for me to work with you. You represent Africa's future. But in the present, you've brought together great minds and fascinating speakers for what will be a stimulating and inspirational programme. It's a programme that I know will provoke passionate debate, but I know you all will all approach it in the spirit of Ubuntu. Thank you. Thank you very much there to Professor Graham Virgo QC.